Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Little Liturgies, an online prayer to help you during your time of at-home or at-school learning. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. As we gather together, my friends, we will hear of the last moments of Jesus' life, where he calls out to his God, his Father, to assist him and help him. These are sad moments, but they remind us that Jesus accompanies us too, and our moments of sadness or fear or loss. And so as we hear these words of Jesus, let us know that it was Jesus' way of telling us that he wants to be with us in all things. And so to begin our liturgy, let's call to mind anything that keeps us from the communion of love and ask the Lord for his healing and his peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather together to hear of Jesus' final moments on the cross in which he entrusts himself to you, help us to know that Jesus is always with us, especially in our times of trial and difficulty. And like him, help us to entrust our lives to your wonderful and caring love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So my friends, let us take a look at our map. It has been quite a journey. This is the second last, last stop um, on, on our map. Once again, we started out in the wilderness with John the Baptist, the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan, we made our way around the Sea of Galilee in which Jesus called his disciples and healed those with troubled spirits. We made our way down to we saw the transfiguration where Jesus revealed his glory to the disciples. And then we went down to Jericho where Jesus healed someone who was blind. And then we made our way to Jerusalem. Last week we heard of him gathering around with his disciples to share a final meal, the Last Supper, in which he promised to be with them always. And today, my friends, Jesus, after being, sadly, nailed to the cross, he now gives up his life for you and for me to save us from sin and death. Let us hear these solemn words. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled the sponge with sour wine, and put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come, will come to him. Elijah will come and take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. 
Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the younger and of Joseph and Sal Salome. These used to follow him and provide for him when he went to Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, my friends, our theme for these for this journey has been called by name. And we hear today Jesus in a moment of tremendous desperation calls upon his heavenly father and questions why God has, his father has forsaken him. Now, we know what's going to happen. In three days' time, Jesus will rise from the dead. But I think the message I would like to share with you today, my friends, is really this moment of desperation that Jesus feels and how he feels like no one can help him, like all the disciples have left, even the faithful women are standing off from a distance, and Jesus is on the cross, and he just feels totally alone. And I, I wish to highlight that, my friends, because sometimes we will feel that way. We will feel like that, that sense of desperation, that no one can help us. And so what do we do with that? Well, this is, <coughs> pardon me, this is why we spend so much time contemplating the resurrection, that in our darkest, saddest, desperate moments, we must remember the hope of the resurrection, that God can somehow get to us. At the same time, my friends, if you experience a moment of sadness and desperation like this, I, I invite you to reach out to people that care about you. Try to describe how you feel and what is bothering with you. I appreciate that sometimes people are busy in our lives and you have to like be a little persistent to get their, their attention. But at the same time, please know that God is always with you. I know Jesus in this reading feels like he's totally alone, but the resurrection comes about because God the Father and the Holy Spirit are with him. And Jesus has willingly undergone this time of trial and loss and difficulty so that we may know that God the Father and the Holy Spirit are also always with us. So if you feel a time of desperation and loss or sadness like we hear in today's gospel reading, my friends, hold strong to the message of Jesus' hope. The resurrection will come. And may that give you the courage to reach out to others who can help you. And so, my friends, as we hear this word, these words of, on one hand, desperation, but also the call for us to always remain people of hope, confident in God's resurrection, let us share our confident faith and hope with all the world. So let us pray. Let's pray for people who feel alone or lost or abandoned or desperate, that they may experience the hope of the resurrection, the knowledge that things can get better. And may they also be surrounded by people who are the ears and hands 
heart of Jesus to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray, my friends, for those situations in our lives that may pull us down, that may make us feel lost or desperate or sad. Or, and let's give them to God. Let's give them to Jesus, because he knows what that's like. And ask him to walk with us, to show us the way, to have the courage to reach out to people who can help us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray, my friends, for those who have a special claim, and a claim on our love, the poor, the widow, the orphan, the foreigner, those who are far from friends and family. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to bless them and help them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for all the sick, my friends. There's many, many of our students and staff have had to be quarantined out of safety to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. I appreciate that this is very challenging and hard. We we'll also pray for all of our friends and family who are in the hospital or at home recovering from disease or illness. We wish them a quick and healthy return. And let's pray for all of our doctors and nurses and caregivers who are working so hard to provide uh, for the sick, that they may be strengthened in this great action of love that they are giving to the vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In a special way, today's readings, my friends, ask us to pray for those who have died. As Jesus died and gave up his life so that all may have eternal life, we entrust our loved ones who have died to Jesus, to his resurrection, to his promise to gather everyone into the communion of love. And so let us pray for all those who have died with confident hope in Jesus' love and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let's take a moment, my friends, for anything that may be bothering you in your heart or a situation that may be troubling you. Have a moment of silence and ask the Holy Spirit to be with you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we gather these prayers and present them to you, we ask you to answer them according to your will. We know that your will is good and gracious and that you wish to accompany us in this life, especially in times of trial or difficulty or desperation. Help us to know your love and answer these prayers according to your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, my friends, let us say the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. So my friends, our journey, <coughs> pardon me, our journey is almost at an end. Next week, we get the joy of celebrating the resurrection. It's going to be great. But before we go, the school of the week. Here we go. Shake it up a little bit. Okay. Put the lid over here. Okay, no cheating. So our winner is St. Catherine. Yay! Congratulations, St. Catherine. That's so wonderful. So let us pray for St. Catherine School, for all the students and staff there. But of course, we pray for all of our schools and staff and students. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So my friends, I look forward to seeing you next week and to celebrating the resurrection with you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Bye.